Hi everybody, this is Luke and the bed is finally completed. As you can see, it took me a little bit of time to complete it. It has been a couple of weeks since our last live. And now I can tell you, it has been a wonderful journey building it. Now, even if this was my third attempt to build an e-bike, there were things that went exactly how I was expecting. But I also had to face challenges that I never thought about building the last two bikes. So in this video, we're gonna talk about challenges that you might face building an e-bike based on a mid-drive kit. We're gonna talk about chain rings this time, also again about brake sensors, how does it feel to drive it, a little mention about range, and also whether you need all this power or not. If you haven't done yet, subscribe to the channel. And now, let's move to the video. If you guys followed my last live, yeah, the one where I almost destroyed my brand new mid-drive kit. Oops. Now I don't know if I have to worry for the motor or for my floor. You might remember that I left you without completing my build. That's because I realized I had some problem okay. with the chain ring uh, this is the motor. and particularly and this with is my the frame. frame. You might know that the first thing that you have to pay attention to is your bottom bracket. Both Bafang and Tongsheng Min Drive Kit works with bike with 68 to 73 mm wide bottom brackets with an inside diameter between 33.6 and 34 mm. But unfortunately that's not enough to be sure your kit will fit into your frame. I'm not very good with drawings, but this may give you an idea of the challenges you may face regarding your chainring. My problem was here. I will try to be as concise as possible. The first thing you have to consider is that the probability that your chain ring is going to be exactly at the same place as your previous chain ring are very low, so it might eventually be closer to the frame or farther away from it. In both cases, you have to recalibrate your rear derailleur. And if your new chain ring has a different number of teeth compared to your previous chain ring, you might also end up changing your chain. I actually had two chain rings compatible with my new mid-drive motor. The stock one, counting 44 teeth, and the one I ordered separately. Now my problem was that the 36 teeth custom chain ring was too far away from the original chain ring position. This would have caused my chain to be too much crooked during traction, so I wasn't able to use it. The stock chain ring, counting 44 teeth, thanks to his concavity, was closer to the frame, but actually so close that he ended up touching the frame. Things that you absolutely want to avoid. So at the end, I came out with a simple solution, which is mounting the stock 44 teeth chain ring, adding the spacer that came with my custom chain ring. This way, I gained enough millimeters to stabilize my chain ring in the right spot. Not so far away, not too close to the frame. Now that you have successfully placed your motor and chain ring, the rest of the building is pretty straightforward. About cable management, this time I decided to have a different approach. All the cables are routed backward from the motor, passing by the center of the frame, just behind the bottom bracket. Starting from there, each cable takes its direction. The main cable and the headlight cable are routed through the vertical bar of the frame. From there, the headlight cable is directed to the back of the bike. This is because, in my case, the headlight cable will be used to power the rear light. This particular light has been readapted to use the power from the cable instead of its battery. The main cable instead proceeds through the front of the frame, then all its branches are fixed around the fork wrapper. From there, each branch is directed to the handlebar. The battery cable is routed through the bottom bar of the frame, as usual. Finally, the speed sensor proceeds backward through the frame to be as close as possible to the rear wheel. If you remembered my last video, I show you that this build has hydraulic brakes. But from the moment I installed the mid-drive motor, it stayed under pressure for a bunch of seconds before get released. It was quite strange and finally I realized why. The mid-drive motor was pushing too hard against the brake tube, preventing the liquid inside from flowing. Once I moved the tube aside, it all started to work well again. Now let's address the brake sensors topic. While I was waiting for my hydraulic sensor to be delivered, I made up a custom sensor that, even if very fragile, worked perfectly fine. I just opened the mechanical brake sensor that I had 
extracted the sensor part and simply zip tied it to the handlebar. Keep in mind that this is just a simple button that, if released, sent to the motor the signal to disengage itself. I was happy for a few days, until I received the hydraulic sensors. I tried all the possibilities to mount it correctly, but with my brake levers, there was just no way to install it in a way that was durable and comfortable. So at the end I went for the simplest solution. Be aware that this solution works for me, and it may not be the good one for your configuration. In the last video I talked about the possibility to replace the hydraulic brakes with simpler mechanical brakes. I decided to give it a try, but only on the front one. It took me a little more than 30 minutes to replace the front brake, and at the end I was able to use the mechanical brake sensor that came with the kit. Some considerations now. Don't believe to those saying that mechanical brakes are inferior. They're just different, with pros and cons. I just decided that for my specific configuration, a mechanical front lever would have provided more control when braking. And that's true. While the rear one is more inclined to completely freeze my wheel, thing that might be dangerous on the front wheel, the mechanical brake offers the possibility to calibrate your braking, and this makes me feel safer. Don't forget, it's also easier to maintain it in the long run. So yeah, two different braking systems on the same bike. Having one only brake sensor is not a big deal, as long as you brake using both levers. Ok bud, how is it going? Does it worth the time and effort to build it? Let me tell you guys, this mid-drive kit is amazing. Before you ask me why I choose Bafang instead of a Tongsheng kit, you can simply refer to the table I showed you in another video. I needed a bike for mixed traffic area. I don't need something to work out. I need something that can bring me home without die trying to face the hill of the city. My Tongsheng kit is now the daily driver of my girlfriend and she loves it. She used the bike to go to work and we love to hang out together with our bikes. The BBS-02B is a cadence sensing motor, meaning that sometimes if you don't select the proper combination of assistance level and gear, it can assist you less than you might need or too much. But once you know how to properly combine them with this 750W variant, you can ride uphill up to 35 km per hour without any effort or run on a flat line at 55 km per hour. I didn't try to go faster, that's too dangerous, but I can guarantee you, it's pure fun. I don't think you'll ever need something more powerful than this, unless you need to power up a cargo bike, and even in that case, if you live in a flat area, the 750 watt is more than enough. Where this build really shine is the available range. My battery is a 48 volt 17.5 ampere hour. To put it in perspective, I made a 15 km journey with 90 meters of total slope and at the end I went from 54.6 volts to 52, consuming just 20% of the total battery. Hey guys, I got some less stuff to share. To give them more emphasis, I'm in my hometown now on my second 500 watt mid-drive build. The last question I want to leave you with is do you really need all this power? Let's not consider legal concern this time. The 750 watt Bofeng kit offers a max torque of 160 newton meter, which may come really handy in case you live in a place with plenty of steep climbs. Now let me just step beside these scripts real quick. And that, guys, is my build. There's nothing fancy about it, he has V-brakes, ugly basket, but actually is enough for what I need. I got this spider to secure my luggage. Now in case you live on a flat area with sporadic climbs, going for such a powerful motor may affect your range if not paired with enough battery. That's why I'm absolutely not planning to upgrade this build I got here, which provides 100 Nm of max torque. That's more than enough. What I'm thinking instead is to increase its range with a second spare battery. But this is the topic for another day. Just be sure you subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any future video on this and other builds I will make. Also, don't forget to hit the like button. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.